Hey everyone, welcome again to the Proverbs series here on Ecclesia Fire Ministries. This time we are on chapter 8, so let's get right into this. Uh, please like and subscribe, all that good and awesome stuff, and we will get into this. So, it's a good sized chapter this time. Title starts as The Commendation of Wisdom. So, does not wisdom call, and understanding lift up her voice? So, uh, right off the bat here, in the English it says her after understanding. Um, in the Hebrew, it doesn't actually say her there. This is um, implied, uh, whether the translators assume that maybe understanding is a her also or not. Um, or if it's mostly just implied for wisdom. But uh, just so you know, it, it's not actually in the text. Um, there may be some feminine words, because like a lot of other languages, Hebrew has masculine and feminine uh, words as well. But here, you know, just remember, it's not just a figure of speech. You know, it's not figurative uh, it says her voice, if it's from a figurative thing where it's just an attribute of God, that might pass. But at the same time, you have to remember that this is also talking about actual sentient beings, angels. Because in Isaiah 11, you have the seven spirits of God, uh, talking about what would rest upon Jesus during his earthly ministry. And wisdom and understanding are two of those seven. Now, wisdom is often called a her throughout here. So when people say there aren't any female angels, um, well, Scripture is quite clear on this. And, and you'll see as we get into this, eight's probably the, the biggest one on that. And uh, so we'll, we'll get into that. But anyway... On top of the heights, beside the way, where the paths meet, she takes her stand. In other words, on top of the heights, beside the way that you're going. So, wisdom is perched at a place that can see around the corner. Wisdom is able to see beyond where you can see. It, it has the the vantage point. That's where wisdom and understanding is. So when you ask the Lord for wisdom, you're able to see around the corner as you walk with the Lord. And where the paths meet. So when there's a turn, when you, you go left or right, and there's a choice in life and you don't know which way to go, the Bible says that she's taking her stand there where the paths meet beside the gates at the opening to the city. So when you're entering into something new, open doors and things like that, at the entrance of the doors, she cries out. So she's not quiet. Wisdom is loud in these moments. So you have to just listen. Listen to the Holy Spirit and get alone with the Lord. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O oh, naive ones, understand prudence, and O oh, fools, understand wisdom. Listen, for I will speak noble things, and the opening of my lips will reveal right things. So wisdom is always right. In other words, wisdom does not, ag wisdom does not agree with immorality. It's always righteous. For my mouth will utter truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the utterances of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing crooked or perverted in them. You know, the Bible talks about how there's the wisdom of man, which God regards as foolishness. So, you need to think about who are you surrounding yourself with, you know, uh, okay, well, I, I have counselors, I have mentors. Okay, but do they know the Lord? 
because Rehoboam surrounded himself with foolish counselors. So there's a difference. There's a different. There's two wisdoms in this world. And a lot of folks will tell you that wisdom comes with experience. And there are certain things that, of course, that you can learn from experience. But the true wisdom of the Lord comes from him. And the Bible says that it is the beginning of wisdom. You know, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you surrounded yourself with people and you're trusting in certain mentors in your life that don't fear the Lord, they, they don't know God, do they actually function in the wisdom of God for your life? Are they able to have God's counsel for you? Okay, you know, sometimes people really overextend this common grace idea where they think, well, I'm just going to believe that my unsaved doctor knows, you know, that God's going to use him. Well, the Bible says that God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Are you sure that an unsaved person isn't prideful? You know, especially in in positions where people are considered, you know, uppity ups and in, in the social order of things. A lot of people in that area have a God complex to them. So if you're banking on God to give this person wisdom, even though they don't fear him, and if they're prideful, the Bible says he resists them. So know who's speaking into your life and know the source. Okay, and if you don't have a saved source in, in a particular area in your life, that's where you really need to be asking the Holy Spirit for those confirmations on where to go and, and, and how to move forward in, in life and in all kinds of other things. Okay, all right. They are all straightforward to him who understands, and right to those who find knowledge. It's funny, it says they're all straightforward to him who understands. So if you don't understand it, it's not straightforward. And so you might think, well, well, that's kind of odd. But really, it's that whole, you gotta fear the Lord, that brings in the beginning of wisdom. It is an imbuement. Understanding is an abument from the Lord. Then, from there, from that position in Christ, the logic of the kingdom of heaven, the principles of heaven, the mechanics of the spirit world from the Bible start to become very straightforward to you. That's why the Bible says, the wicked comprehend the righteous not, and vice versa. Right, we can't comprehend the wicked because we're on a completely different logic. Right, the, the Bible says He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of these three things that replace fear and fight against fear and drive out fear: love, power, and a sound mind. Okay, love, perfect love, casts out all fear. Power, that's grace. And a sound mind. What's that mean? Well, fear wars against the sound mind of Christ. It war. It argues against it. So you have those two kingdoms going there. In the same way with wisdom, it becomes straightforward to you. It is not complex to you when you're walking in the wisdom of the Lord. God's wisdom isn't confusing. Whenever you see confusion enter and there's no rest in it, that's a good indicator that, okay, wait a minute, if there's chaos here, then peace is not here. So that means the Holy Spirit's probably not in this thing, all right? So it says, strive to enter into his rest. Uh, the word peace, shalom in Hebrew is a violent word because that peaceful feeling you feel from peace is the end result of the shalom of God coming in and wiping out chaos in your life, okay? And in the same manner, these things come straight forward to us, to those who have understanding, and right to those who find the knowledge of the Lord. Take my instruction and not silver, 
and knowledge rather than choicest gold. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all desirable things cannot compare with her. Right? It's, it's one of those, give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime things, where if you really all of the imbalances and the whole wealth stuff, you know, when people get imbalanced and preach wealth and get into materialism, all of that pretty much goes under striving to get riches before you get the wisdom, right? He's saying here, get the knowledge rather than choicest gold, get the instruction than silver, and wisdom which is better than jewels. Because once you have that, then there won't be imbalances in the use of Father's resources as you're going about your Father's business and seeking first His kingdom and His righteousness. And of course, all these things are added unto us when we do that. All right. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and I find knowledge and discretion. So... When you are walking in wisdom, you find new knowledge and discretion from the Lord. And prudence isn't something that can be really taught. It's something that's caught. It's an intuition, right? So I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, saying you get it as a partnership. You get it as a group deal when you're getting the wisdom of the Lord. And prudence is, is that... You know, you've got wisdom, knowledge, and understanding being the big three that you see all throughout Proverbs. Prudence is that fourth one that's always woven all throughout here. And it's the cure for naivety. And there's a lot of gullibility in people these days. And that's why we need the prudence of the Lord. Okay, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Do you hate evil? Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverted mouth I hate. You know, it's, it mentions pride there. Pride, people can sometimes think, oh man, you better be careful because the, the higher you get in God, you, you, might, you might get prideful. Actually, it's the opposite. The closer you get to the Lord, the more illogical pride becomes. If you're far from the Lord, then pride has a chance of sneaking in. Well, maybe I did get here without him, you know? But really, the closer you get, the more you see, the more you realize just how big and awesome and amazing your father is. It's like, wow, there's no way... I could have ever done this on my own because he's just so big in your view all the time, okay? So just keep that in mind. There's a really big difference between confidence and pride. Pride says, well, let me start with confidence. Confidence says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Pride says I can do all things through me who strengthens me. And the more and more you learn the more that statement sounds crazy, right? Someone else conceived you. Someone else birthed you. Someone else wiped your butt. They fed you. Someone else taught you all throughout school. You know, someone else gave you a job. S some customer agreed to buy your product or services. There are no such thing as self-made people. And so wisdom has this disdain for pride because it just doesn't make any sense. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. Power is mine. Now, this could be wisdom still talking or this is an interjection point where wisdom was talking and now understanding introduces himself. Could be. Just ask the Holy Spirit and see what he says. I am understanding. Power is mine. By me kings reign, 
and rulers decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles, all who judge rightly. So if you don't have a saved judge who's functioning in the understanding or wisdom of the Lord, you're not going to see right judgments coming forth from them. Plain and simple. I love those who love me. Do you love the understanding and the wisdom of the Lord? And those who diligently seek me will find me. Okay? You just have to ask, right? Jesus said, ask. And he said, knock and seek, and you'll find it. The door will be open to you. Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, even pure gold, and my yield better than choicest silver. I walk in the way of righteousness. So listen, God is counseling us to ask for the thing that makes us wealthy, enduring wealth and righteousness. And I know that often people will say, well, when it says wealth, don't just think of money. I get that. Absolutely. It's not just money. But it's also not excluding money, right? And so if there's anywhere that money and, and those types of subjects should be taught, it's from the counsel, it's from the context of wisdom and the acquiring of the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding, and prudence of the Lord here. All right. So it says, I walk in the way of righteousness. So again, this is reaffirming that God's wisdom doesn't go against his morality, his standard of righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, even pure gold, and my yield better than choice of silver. I walk in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice to endow those who love me with wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. Well, hallelujah, that's something to declare of yourself and ask the Lord for. God, I ask you for wisdom and understanding and that they would fill my treasuries. All right, so here is a really fun place where wisdom starts talking about how God created the world it says, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way. Other translations will say, um, I was the first of his ancient works. Okay? So we're talking about a being that's made on day one of creation. Psalm 33, with his word, he created the heavens, and with his breath he filled all of its hosts. In other words, the reason why you don't see God creating the angels throughout the creation week is because if you're only looking for his word to create them, you've missed it. The Bible says that his breath made them. So every day that he's creating a different aspect of the heavens, which we're talking about first, second, and third heaven. First heaven is physical world. He, his breath that's coming out as he's speaking it is filling the angelic host to steward over those parts of creation all right so before his works of old from everlasting i was established from the beginning from the earliest times of the earth when there were no depths i was brought forth when there were no springs abounding with water before the mountains were settled before the hills i was brought forth while he had not yet made the earth and the fields, nor the first dust of the world. You know, in Job, one of the things that God does when he comes down is, is he uses these type of examples when he's asking Job these rhetorical questions, reminding him, you don't know everything. You don't know exactly what you're talking about. He's reminding, you know, he's saying, were, were you there when I made this stuff? <laughs> Well, wisdom can say that she was there. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills I was brought forth, while he had not yet made the earth and the fields nor the dust of the world, uh, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when the springs of the deep became fixed. 
just quick point there springs of the deep don't just think of that as you know trying to think through here like oh physical you know springs maybe those are the ones that burst forth during the flood and in thinking only in physical ways got to get eastern minded with this stuff it's not this or that it's this and that so if you've ever heard of someone talk about how there can be spiritual wells on land and blessings on the land god made both he made both physical springs and spiritual springs and there are blessings on the land and it's good to become aware of what you're working with because if you're a steward of the garden where god set you you need to know the spiritual atmosphere because there could be some well and you can learn this in the story of Isaac where he was constantly having to unclog wells the Philistines would would fill in. There may be things that have been filled in in sin on the land that God wants you to unplug and cleanse and let that blessing flow. All right. When he set for the sea its boundary so that the water would not transgress his command... When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the world, his earth, and having my delight in the sons of men. Now, therefore, O sons, listen to me, for blessed are they who keep my ways. Heed instruction and be wise, and do not neglect it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at my doorposts. So how can you do that? How can you do that? Well, there's the, there's the figurative translation, which is, okay, what are some ways that I can put myself where wisdom speaks? What are ways where I can constantly be in an environment where wisdom is being spoken over me, it, you know, getting in the word, establishing, you know, scheduled times in your prayer closet to meditate on the word, listening to teachers and, and different ministries. But for the spiritual side of things, you can also access the actual realm of wisdom in the spirit. And uh, for that type of stuff, I, I talked about that in some previous teachings but uh, if you haven't check out my teaching on how to see in the spirit on the channel um, that'll help explain some of this stuff because what you can do is once you get used to seeing in the spirit just like John first chapter of Revelation he says then I turn to see the voice right once you get comfortable with turning to see Jesus like John did in the spirit you could start adding like daily lessons and things from as the Holy Spirit wills in your prayer closet where you can turn to go into the realm of wisdom to hear from wisdom and receive instruction. And if you're wondering, okay, uh, where do I have a promise in Scripture for that where, where I could actually have access to that in heaven or, or, or in the spirit world. That's Zechariah 3 where the angel of the Lord is speaking to Joshua the high priest. Zechariah is watching it. This is all happening in heaven. The angel of the Lord has a bunch of angels come by and give Joshua the high priest fresh new robes of righteousness. And he says, if you obey my commandments and keep my charge... Uh, then I will appoint you as a judge over my house. I will give you charge over my courts, and I will give you free access to these that stand by here. And so these and here are in heaven. So there's your promise. All the promises of God are yes and amen to those who believe. You have access to the angelic. And that, of course, is, is in line with what you see your father doing right he'll send that stuff your way he'll direct you in that okay we we seek first jesus of course 
And uh, if you're timid about seeing in the spirit and, oh gosh, you know, what if I... What if I'm tricked by a fallen angel or something? Just remember the Bible says that you that someone can't truthfully declare that Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. Okay? So testing the Spirit is actually quite simple. All right? Is Jesus Lord? And if you don't get a solid, easy answer from any spirit... You know what team they're batting for, okay? And you can just send out the fire of God and the sword of the Spirit and and take care of business, okay? All right. For he who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me injures himself. All those who hate me love death. You know, in God's law in scripture you have the three main categories in torah you have morality wisdom and the types and shadows of what christ would accomplish at the cross and so sometimes you'll see there in the commandments some of the commandments aren't necessarily moral issues they're issues of wisdom and so what wisdom is saying there is he who sins against me People who break the wisdom laws injure themselves because they were put in place there by God to protect people, right? A lot of those sanitation laws and things like that, you know. Okay, uh, the Bible says when you're in that refugee camp, if you want to go number two, go outside the, the refugee camp because there's no plumbing, right? And bury it when you go out there. Okay, is that a moral issue? No, not really, but it is a wisdom issue. I mean, imagine the flies, imagine the insects and and the disease that could spread with something like that. So it's those type of wisdom instructions from Father where he, he loves us, so he says, hey, look, be wise in dealing with some of this stuff. And you can go through the Torah and you can start, okay, is this morality... Is this wisdom or is this something that Jesus would complete at the cross because it was just a band-aid to get get humanity to the cross so he could heal the condition of the human heart and now that it's healed we don't need that bandage, right? You know. So anyway, that concludes chapter eight. So y'all be blessed. Uh I just wanna remind you, if you made it this far, um I have a merch shop for the channel it's leaving a i have it in the description uh please like and subscribe and we'll see you later